You beautifully dedicate my body to your son, Sylvester. I think that there's a lot that I hope you can learn from it. A huge fellow Britney Spears fan. You talk about her extensively in your essay, Toxic. Well, at one point I almost was like, I have to take that part out of the book, the Britney part. Is this book, My Body, sort of your way of reclaiming your narrative? As a model and an actress, you're always a part of someone else's vision. And it felt really amazing to, to become someone who was the creator. Emily Ratajkowski, so good to see you. Congratulations on releasing my body. You're releasing this baby into the world. What is your ultimate goal? I was really wanted to talk about power dynamics. I hope that women in general feel like there are things in my experience that they can relate to about being a woman, about the kind of, um, you know, dance that women do to both, you know, feel beautiful, to sometimes cover themselves up, to, to really sexualize themselves um, and how they can kind of get ahead and also feel taken advantage of at the same time and the way that they have to experience that. Um, I want them to relate to that. Um, I hope that, you know, for men, um, that they're able to feel some compa compassion and understand what it's like to be a woman. You know, at this point, everything that you say is is picked apart, hyper analyzed, turned into a headline. How have you learned to live in that space? And is this book, My Body, sort of your way of reclaiming your narrative? Absolutely. I think one of the biggest themes in the book is control. And obviously, I made this book. I you know poured every over every sentence and every word choice, and it's the ultimate act of control. Um, and making something too. I mean, as a model and an actress, you're always a part of someone else's vision, someone else's photograph, someone else's project. And it felt really amazing to, to become someone who was the creator. Um, that, you know, being said, you, I've watched, you know, little things, information leak, stories leak, and things be turned into things that they're just not. Um, and I know that the world consumes media in that way. Um, but I'm really excited that the book's going to finally be available for people to, to have the even option and the opportunity to read things in my own words. What would you tell younger Emily who had to read things and see Google alerts, you know, now that you're 30 years old and, and you mm -hmm. have a lot more security with, with yourself? I even find myself like, it's very easy to just look at a headline and make an opinion and not have to take the extra 30 seconds to read the article. Um, and I think we're all guilty of that, my, me, myself as well. Um, so I think that, you know, just in general, now being someone who's in the public eye and has experienced that so much, I really encourage people to have a healthy little bit of disbelief of and, and wanting, you know, and just understand that these, these headlines are designed for people to click on them, essentially. Read the article before you share it. How about that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, Two-parter here. I'm mm -hmm. curious, which was the essay that was hardest to relive as you were writing it? Mm -hmm. And which one is most daunting uh, about releasing it into the world? Hardest to relive um, was Buying Myself Back, which was published in The Cut um, a year ago. I, When I first wrote it, I thought, oh, wow, this was really bad writing and I'll never share it again. But I just had to write about it for myself and that's fine. But took sort of other people and me revisiting it and, and saying, okay, actually, I think this is worth sharing. Um, and then the one that I'm, you know, the most nervous to put out in the world, but it sort of already happened is Lord Lines because I just didn't want to write it because I knew that the headlines that were, you know, going to come out of it, um, that it would turn into this like juicy bit of gossip and that, you know, the other more nuanced or even just the nuance of that particular story would be lost in, in the media frenzy. I know. And how are you feeling about all that? I'm feeling okay now that the book's about to be available. Um, you know, I feel just really happy with um, the way that people are talking about the book. And I'm just very much looking forward to the public having access to it. You're in good company, huge fellow Britney Spears fan. You've talked about her on your social media. You talk about her extensively in your essay, Toxic. Have you sent her the book? Have you had a chance to connect with her? I haven't. Um, I feel like a lot of people are kind of sending her things and, you know, whatever. Um, I, you know, I think what she represented, at, at one point I almost was like, I have to take that part out of the book, the Britney part, because I just felt like so many people were writing about her and talking about her. and. I didn't want to just like make it like jump on that kind of bandwagon. And then 
actually, interestingly, by the time, you know, I was finishing the book and it was going to be completed, I was like, of course, I have to talk about her now. She she represents something in the zeitgeist, but I don't know her personally. If she gets a chance to read it, how do you hope she feels? I know what it's like, I mean, to be written about as something that represents someone else's life and it, it doesn't always mean as much to you as it does to maybe the person who's writing about it. So, um, you know, I hope she reads the book, but I also um, hope she just is happy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think yeah. that's what we're all feeling inside, right? Yeah. You beautifully dedicate my body to your son, Sylvester. And I imagine one day he'll grow up. He might be curious about the book. He might want to read it. Are there parts where you're like, oh gosh, maybe you could skip over that part? And is there a part where you're like, I hope he pays special attention to that? I dedicated the book to him because I wrote about these experiences to make myself the best version of, of a mother that I could be. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, I think really it was about love and that's why I wrote the book. And I think that there's a lot that I hope you can learn from it. But again, he's such a baby right now. I'm just interested in keeping him safe and happy.